I always do that on a Sunday. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Tune Review uh, for this afternoon's uh, or tonight's uh, review of Fulham nil, Newcastle United one. Uh, just me and Bob, uh, Billy Bob, flying this, uh, the the flag for the Tune Review today. Uh, Sam's uh, one of Sam's dogs is uh, quite poorly, um, so uh, Sam is uh, right be on doggy duties tonight, and uh, of course Alex still has uh, guests. So he is unable to join us tonight as well. So again, you're stuck with me and Billy Bob, uh, but we will uh, bring you our review of the game. Of course, we commentated on it, so I don't think there's any better two to do it, Billy, in that uh, in that respect. Mm. Um, how are you this grand Sunday evening? Absolutely excellent. Yeah, superb. It's been a great weekend with us winning. Manchester United not winning. Uh, Spurs are currently not winning either, so it could be a good weekend for us. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, it, it, teams dropping points, uh, you know, is is very good for us. Um, I think we need to get our ass into gear. <laughs> um, uh, you know, if if we look at that game yesterday, I mean, you know, we kind of got lucky, I guess. Uh, but we'll look at the teams in a minute. Uh, as usual, if you do enjoy tonight, guys, please do give us the thumbs up. Um, as I say many, many, many times, uh, it is so important to the channel uh, that we keep those coming in uh, because we get recognized in the algorithms of YouTube so that uh, fellow fans like yourselves can find us uh, and hopefully subscribe in the future as well. Uh, please do hit the notification bell as well if you do subscribe to the channel uh, so that you never miss an upload or a schedule of a live show. And of course, you can become a member of the Tune Review tonight by hitting that dollar sign uh, just underneath uh, the two of us. And as usual, you can donate to the channel if you do so wish by hitting that dollar sign at the bottom of the live comments, which will, of course, guarantee your comments to be read uh, out on the show. Um, now, news has just come in that uh, Joe Kinney has passed away, Billy. Oh, dear. That's a shame. Yeah. Um, not quite a favourite of the Newcastle fans, of course, uh, um, for his time here. Uh, but... Uh, nevertheless, um, you know, a, a football man, uh, well and truly, um, and mm. uh, another one of the sort of uh, football fans all gone. Yeah, well, he was, as I can remember him playing as a, as a kid, playing for Tottenham, mm. uh, an excellent defender, uh, and a Spurs side that won plenty of trophies, League Cups and, and, and UEFA Cups and things like that. Um, then, he, of course, we saw him then at Wimbledon, where he did a fantastic job with them mm. in, his, in his pomp as a manager. Went to Forest, didn't quite work for him there. It was a very massive surprise when he came to us. A, a, a bad surprise in many ways. Uh, of course, he wasn't doing too bad. And then he had a heart attack, didn't he? And had to kind of pack it in. But yeah, yeah, he, 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 he had a couple of wins. He, we won at West Brom, actually, where he had his heart attack, didn't he? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that was him done. But then, of course, Mark Ashley brought him back to be our transfer guru. And during the summer where we made no transfers apart from uh, one. Wow. Well, ridiculous. I mean... but yeah, he was, a, he, was a, he was a strange fellow. He was a definitely an old school dinosaur type. Mm. Not the kind of bloke you want as your transfer guru or really as a manager in 2009 time. Uh, but a, a fantastic football man and um, an international footballer for Ireland mm -hmm. and plenty of trophies at Tottenham. So rest in peace, Joe. Yeah, uh, indeed. Um, like I said, didn't really endear himself to the Newcastle fans, but he was a football man uh, well and truly and a bit of a character. Uh, so uh, RIP to do uh, Joe Kinnear and um, thoughts and prayers with his family at this uh, very sad time. Uh, Toon Mixes, uh, here's a one for you, lads. Would you move to Darlington's 25,000 all seat stadium while we rebuild St. James's? Ooh, interesting, interesting one. question because it doesn't get used a lot. That's a certainty. Yes, quite better than going to the stadium a lot. It's sure to God. I mean, the security is there would be unbelievable. So, oh, well, I mean, uh, <laughs> can you imagine um, every well, second well, week of the Toon Army embracing on uh, all heading down to uh, Wearside? I, I, I just can't see that working at all. No, no, I mean, if I'm perfectly honest. And there's nowhere else really to go, is there? I mean, Football no. League wouldn't allow us to play at Kingston Park, that's for certain. Premier League, would say, nowhere near big enough. No. So, where else would there be to go? I guess well, Starlington would be the best answer, but maybe they'd stay, maybe they'd build it in stages and just do one stand at a time and maybe stay at St. James's while they did it. Well, they did that while they did the Gallagher, didn't they? Um, yeah. And the Leases, to be fair. They did it, you know, uh, and the majority, I think, of the Leases was done um, during the summer. And then, of course, the next levels that were put on, um, you know, was done um, in stages. So maybe they could do that again. Uh, Julie says that was some uh, game, the old firm derby. First one I've watched in years. Yeah, 3-3, I think I finished. Mm. Um, 
I've been out and about all day. I've been down to Manchester Airport today with the, the little man, promised him for his birthday. Um, his birthday was last week. Uh, promised him that we'd go before the end of the Easter holidays. And looking at the forecast, it was going to rain for the rest of the week, so we decided to go today. Uh, so I've been up since 6 o'clock. Bloody knackered is not in the vocabulary at the minute. But uh, we are here to sum up yesterday's game. Uh, up the air once, his commentary was excellent yesterday. Thank you, lads. Uh, George, good evening to you. Uh, Peter says, I've never seen Eddie look so furious when he got the team together first half. Well, let's get into it, shall we? Because uh, this is how Newcastle United lined up yesterday. Uh, we went with Dubravka in goal, Kraft, Cher, Burn Hall, uh, a midfield uh, trio of uh, Bruno Longstaff, Willock, and the front three, Murphy, Gordon, Isak. Now, obviously, uh, we were alerted straight away to the fact that he dropped Barnes and Anderson. And uh, during that first half an hour, Billy, uh, mm. it's it's fairly safe to say that things were not going well. Well, it was plainly obvious that the two that were massive kind of creators in the game against Everton were mm. missing. Yeah. Anthony Gordon was causing them problems, massive problems, even though we didn't have much of the ball. But defensively, we were terrible. There was no helping out from Willock for uh, Lewis Hall. Mm -hmm. And the same on the other side, really, with Murphy and and, um, and Kraft. And it was, we were kind of, you know, losing the battle in midfield. Absolutely, we were 100%. Yeah. And it was only when Anderson came on that we started to regain a little bit of it. Not not as much as we would have liked. Uh, but certainly once um, Harvey Barnes came on, you know, it improved our game no end because Gordon went to the side. And we looked a threat going forward as well as, you know, looking solid defensively as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, again, I, I couldn't believe what I, I think that's probably Billy, one of the worst half an hour of football we have ever played under mm. Eddie Howe. And I, you know, I know we've had some bad games under Eddie Howe, don't get me wrong here, but that was just unbelievably poor. Um, Fulham, I mean, if they'd had a, a proper strike force on the pitch yesterday, Billy, who knew where the net was. Uh, the game would have been out of sight at half time. And, and th that isn't an over exaggeration. That is just pure fact that Fulham, they were played some great football leading up to the final third of the pitch. But when it came to trying to put the ball in the net, they were powder puff. And I think a lot of Fulham fans would probably be very frustrated yesterday because of that. They knew they should have put Newcastle out of sight within that first half, and they didn't. And they paid the ultimate penalty, of course, as we know. But playing football like that, you, you know, you need. A good strike force there to capitalise on the amount of chances that your team's creating, and they didn't do that. Well, on, on the flanks with William and and, and uh, Iwobi, they look really, really dangerous. Yeah, and we, yeah. And we and we praised Muniz for the game. Well, I did certainly. He's been very good. Mm -hmm. Yes, they had a stinker, didn't he? Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. He was physical, but you know, they weren't going to score in a month of Sundays where he was playing yesterday. You know, he had one chance, I think, first half, which was straight to the keeper. Um, but apart from that, didn't really trouble the goalkeeper at all. It was a physical lump. He was a physical battle, but he come off second best against both Cher and uh, Dan Burns, to be fair. Mm. Uh, well, Tom says there, the first half was one of the worst performances I've seen this season. Um, it, two, one, two. Spurs. Oh. Well, I mean, you know, top four's out of our reach anyway. I think Spurs will finish top four, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I really do think Spurs will finish top four. Villa have fallen away. Um, they always shit at Villa, don't they? You know, whenever they're in a really good position, they always seem to bottle it. Um, good. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't really care. Um, yeah, so the first half, one of the poorest performances, and I think a lot of Newcastle fans will admit that, that you know, that's not being negative uh, or anything like that. We're just stating clear facts. I mean, that that the, the possession was a, was a joke. I mean, we only had 33% possession in the whole game. Um, but Joe Willick, Billy, uh, Eddie Howe's come out and said that he was playing again, not fully fit, and now he's out again with the with, with, with an Achilles problem. Yeah, I mean, it didn't make any sense selecting him. I know Anderson's had a little football of late and probably needed rotating. But to bring in but a take him off later on, you know what I mean? Don't yeah, play Willock when he's hurt. Exactly, yeah. You start at Anderson and maybe after an hour take him off. But if Willock's not fit to start with, you know, you're defeating the objective rest of Anderson, surely to God. Mm. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever, in any shape, world form, I've got to say. Anderson had to start that game if Willock was injured. Absolutely, he did. And we, we've sensed Willock's injury the past three or four games because he hasn't looked yep. himself, has he? Yeah, well, very, very true. Very true. Uh, George Newcastle says, uh, even worse than the Arsenal first half. Oh, God, yes. 
I mean, it was dreadful. Come on, it was terrible. Um, but one guy that clearly wasn't at the races yesterday, and now we're probably going to be without Willick. So, you know, for, for I mean, if it's Achilles, Billy, I mean, you're, you're looking at a few weeks at least. So, mm. um, you know, whether he comes back this season is yet to be seen. But Jacob Murphy, I mean, that's the worst game I've I've seen him play under Eddie Howe. Uh, you know, and you said it from the start yesterday. If he starts dodgy like he did with a couple of wayward passes, he doesn't get any better in the game. He mm. either starts fantastic and stays fantastic, or he starts poorly and gets worse. And that's what happened yesterday. His he was atrocious yesterday, and it's a shame because he's been excellent. It was a carbon copy of the Man City game. He did exactly the same in the league game. I mean, the Man City game away, he was dreadful mm. in that game as well. Started poorly, got worse, and he did exactly the same yesterday. And it's a, it's a bit of a kind of thing that he does. If he starts well, you know you're going to get a good game out of him. But if he starts badly, well, don't you know? Don't expect anything of him because he, he, he'll be dreadful. Yesterday yeah. was probably worse than Man City. He was absolutely awful. Oh god, uh, he just. I think he knew he wasn't at the races as well because a couple of times the camera panned on him and he was like. I, I just want the ground to swallow me up here. This just isn't going well. Uh, Nigel says it was like playing with nine players first half hour. Uh, Paul, if your son likes planes, have you seen Big Jet TV on YouTube? Great viewing. Yes, uh, we are a member of Big Jet TV. Um, we, we love it. Jerry, uh, he's superb. Brilliant, uh, brilliant, brilliant channel. Uh, Toon Gamer says if they had Mitrovic, we would have lost. Uh, yes. Uh, Lisa still could do with Carrius and goal. Now, Yes, uh, to a degree, but I thought Dubravka was solid yesterday. Uh, a couple of occasions, Billy, again, he's not coming off his leg quick enough. That you know, there was an incident with Kraft, there was an incident with Cher. Both wanted the goalkeeper out a lot quicker. He didn't. Uh, I think he had a very good argument, a big argument with Fabian Cher at one point uh, in the first half when things weren't going our way. But we know what we get with Dubravka. And I think we just have to accept that Eddie is going to have him as the number one for the rest of the season. He's not going to drop him now. Uh, but what he did have to do yesterday to keep the ball out of the net, he did. Yeah, and I'll tell you what was pleased with him yesterday. He was coming out and claiming crosses. He was fantastic at it. Yeah, uh, yeah. A couple of times, second half, as you just mentioned there. And once he punched when he should have caught. Um, but apart from that, I thought he had an exemplary game. Yeah, I, thought I was quite pleased with Jabroff yesterday. Mm. Uh, Abs, I think you need to get where we're coming from here. We're not having a go or moan about Eddie Howe. What we're saying is, if Joe Willock is not fit, lessons have to be learnt this season, Abs, and stop playing them. Because now he's out again for a long period of time with an Achilles problem. And he could have started Anderson. I, I get where you're coming from, protecting him with, with just coming back absolutely 100%. But if Joe Willock's not fit, the injuries that he's had this season... You, you don't risk him, Abs. Come on. Um, you, you know, you play Anderson for 50 minutes or, or even 45. You know, no problem. Uh, Anderson's, he's 21 year old. He's fit as a fiddle man. Uh, Joe Willock's really struggled with injuries this season. And, um, you know, I, I just think different. We should have learned lessons. I understand why he did it, of course, protecting the players, like Billy said. But. You know, you've got to be careful with players that are already injured and you're putting on the pitch, especially after what's happened this season, Abs. That's what we're saying. Uh, we're certainly not mourning about Eddie Howe. I don't think I don't think Eddie Howe expected us to three one to Spurs now. I don't think Eddie Howe expected us to come out and play like that in the first half an hour. That's not down to the manager, that's the players. One hundred percent. Pedro Pony scored. My good God, there is a miracle. Uh, Dan, thank you for your super chat. Dan Robinson, I think we've done great. Most teams that play UEFA without a deep squad end up relegated, but we're fighting for the European places with the worst injuries. Hey, absolutely. Listen, I, I, I was thinking about this when I was driving the day and, and thinking, you know what? If we finish in a European place, after everything that's happened this season, it is, it is absolutely remarkable. And, and and I'm not joking with that. It is a remarkable achievement. But I tell you what, the media won't pick up on that. We've had our moans. We've had our gripes about Eddie doing this or the players doing that. But if we finish in a European spot, I will tip my hat to Eddie Howe and the players and say, wow, you have done fantastic from some of the results we've had and performances we've had. But we still got the fight in us and the belief to finish in a European spot, my God, will I tip my hat to those guys. Absolutely, 100%. And I think, Billy, if that's the case, then, you know, we we deserve to really just eat our words and say, look, hey, we played some poor games this season, but by God, we've had one thing we've never lost is the fight. 
Yeah, 100%. I mean, Eddie Howe's made a lot of mistakes this season, in my opinion. Um, but we're still up there fighting and, you know, he's getting things right now, I think. I think his substitutions yesterday, although they were forced by injuries, but they were the right ones that possibly could have been done a little bit earlier. But he managed to manufacture one out of it for us with the players as well. Obviously said something at half time to them because I think we're yeah. a better, much better second half. Um, so, yeah, you've got to give him credit for that. Yeah, uh, Mary, uh, who, by the way, is a new moderator on the Tune Review. Um, we've got Norvik as well, and uh, we have a few more, hopefully, uh, getting sorted in the next couple of days. Uh, has Dubes picked up an injury as a result of yesterday's match? I don't think so, Mary. Nothing's being said from I the mean, club. Marco Silva had actually said that Dubravka went down to kill their momentum. We said it on the commentary, mm. but anyhow, of course... Candidly denied it. <laughs> yeah, but listen, as much as I think the first one might have been that, Billy, the second one definitely wasn't. No, he got kicked the second um, time. He got kicked the second time, which was, it, it almost forced him off, to be fair. So, um, yeah, it is it is what it is. Um, not small, just still loading. Thank you for being a member of the Toon Review for 18 months now. Uh, evening chaps and chat. Thank you very much for that long membership. Marvin says, I hate to say it, uh, but I don't think how will be our manager next year if we really want to make that next cons consistent step. He will live and die uh, with under average talent. He is just not that guy. Well, Marvin, I'm going to surprise you here. Uh, I want Eddie to still be in charge next season. Uh, I do not want Eddie Howe to be removed because I want Eddie Howe to be given a chance with a fully fit squad and money to spend. Let's see what he can do. Uh, do I trust Eddie with uh, with, with transfers? Uh, yes, I do, as long as he's got a good director of football in there with him, which it looks like we'll have for the transfer window. So I believe that they can get it right, and with a fully fit squad, I still have massive faith in Eddie. Uh, the football we can play with fully fit players, we've seen it. And I don't see any reason why we would want Eddie Howe out now because I've had a good thing about this, like I say today, and I still think us finishing where we, you know, Europe or not actually, I think where we're going to finish in the league is certainly in the top, I'd say top eight, we're still going to finish top eight, right? Which I think is remarkable given the season we've had. And, you know, I've had a big think about when I've been driving today, Billy, and, it, you know, you look back and you think we've had some really poor performances this season, but then... We've seen them graft and fight for other results as well. And they're pulling together. You can see that belief yesterday. They're pulling together. They realised it was wrong in the first half. Words would have been said in that dressing room because, yeah, the second half started a bit poorly. Fulham came at us again. But after about 10 minutes, we got into the game and we started playing some decent stuff. Certainly when Murphy went off, I think when Barnes came on, that was a big difference. But we've got that belief, Billy, and that's a massive thing for Newcastle. 100% at the moment we have. Um, you can go on a run of games now and I think that will cement the European place. Mm -hmm. If we don't get a European place, I think he'll be gone. I've got to be, I've got to still, I'll, still, I'll still maintain that. Mm -hmm. I think European football, conference minimum, I think the, the owners will look at it and think, mm, yeah, I think it's time for a change and maybe invest in a, in a new manager. Yeah. But I hope Eddie Howe does it. I really do. Well, like I say, so do I. North Shields Jeff says, uh, is the FFP changes going to a vote from the clubs? Yes, in June, uh, which is going to be done before the transfer window opens, which could be interesting. Uh, Ab says, if the available players, Willock was an obvious choice. It makes total sense. Not, Not if he's injured. injured, Abs. Yes, if he's fit, it made total sense. Absolutely leaving Anderson out, and you know, protecting players, as you said in your previous comment. I totally agree with that. But what I don't agree with is it doesn't make total sense playing him when he's been carrying an injury with what's happened to him this season. I think it's a, a risk that we should have learned that it's not worth taking at times. Um, Jan, thank you for your super chats. Uh, yeah, Fire Nord 6, Ajax nil, Mint is scoring two and a one assist. This guy, Billy, um, I mean, you know, we've said we're going to play him out on loan again next season, but 3 2 now. No, 2 2. Uh, Sheffield United, Chelsea. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I, I'm not a mind reader, Billy. Uh, you stick your fingers up. I don't know what match you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not Mystic Meg, mate. I went 3-1 last time. How could it be 2-2? Two, two? Well, maybe it, maybe it was a VAR disallowed goal and they've equalised. You just maybe. never know. Um, yeah, so Minte, Billy, I mean, he looks some special player, by the way. 100%. Yeah, he's doing it. I mean, it's not only doing it in Eredivisie. He's scoring goals in Champions League. 
So, by the way, that Sheffield United equaliser is coming in the 93rd minute. So, that's good news Ooh, for Oh, wow. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, Minte, clearly a talent. Not the finished article by any shadow of the imagination. No, no, no. But, as, as well as kind of doing really well in Eredivisie, he's been in Champions League. So, you've got to give him, you've got to give him credit. And surely he'll get a go at Newcastle in pre-season. See if well, he's got him. He's got he might, to. He might save for a lot of money. You don't know, do you? Well, exactly. But I think the position he plays is the position that we are looking for a star to put, to move into. And he plays that position, Billy, very, very well. Um, he can, I, I just think he's absolutely sensational, this kid. Um, and we've picked a, you know, he's a gem. And he could be that hidden gem if, like you say, we sign him. Uh, sorry, we, we, we keep him in the summer. Let him have a bit of... Uh, um, pre-season see what he can do that's you know take him away at the end of the season you know on this australian trip let's 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 get him involved 100 percent. and if I mean, we still might buy a, a right, right winger right foot sided forward but it means we can sell murphy and Amber and both of them get get them both out can't we yeah absolutely uh will uh 1477 thank you for being a member for nine months that's a whole pregnancy billy uh hello guys hope everyone is well r.i.p joe kinnear uh indeed well said um, how roasting the players is the funniest thing I've seen all year. Well, it wasn't funny to me. It was it was actually quite a relief to see. You know, we've all been questioning whether Eddie's got this, this kind of anger with the players, but at that break yesterday when Dubravka was down, he went at them, Billy. Quite rightly too. I mean, we were absolutely abysmal before that injury. Mm -hmm. And actually, it took us till, till Willock came off and Anderson came on that kind of allowed Bruno to get in the game because for the first 25, 30 minutes with Willock on the pitch, it was it was a one-man midfield because Longstaff was his usual yeah. self first half. Yeah. And Willock yeah. wasn't fit enough to get in the game, really. He did, did nothing. Mm. nothing. Yeah. So once we got an extra midfield alongside Bruno, he started to become more competitive. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we got better. Clearly, that was always the case. But Eddie Howe was right to have a go because the defence weren't great the first 25 minutes or so either. No, it weren't. They we looked very... Yeah. I mean, shame that one mistake. But oh. listen, I thought he was magnificent apart from that. that. Yeah. Um, Dan Byrne was superb again. I, I think, you know, Dan Burns, Byrne as well and truly said, look, this is my best position. I love playing in any position for Newcastle United, but he is by far a much better centre-back. And these two, I've said it before, they played together when the takeover season before Botman arrived, they were mm. superb together. And that, you know, the last couple of games have been very solid. Uh, Gareth Baskin, member for 15 months. Thank you, Gareth. Uh, one more game then, 11 days off. Yeah, because of the FA Cup, of course, we uh, we get a week off because of Man United playing the FA Cup, uh, which will do us the world of good, uh, certainly for the running. Um, that Man United game, Billy, is is becoming more and more and more important, Billy, as time goes on. They were very lucky today again, weren't they? It was well, they were, it was a strange game, wasn't it? I mean, 15 attempts to none or 15 shots to none in the first half. Uh, the 1-0 down, then suddenly they have a spell. I mean, Menu, I'm sorry, is, is he's a talent. There's no he's doubt about it. The, 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 I mean, that goal was sensational. Um, but then Liverpool getting the penalty, rightly so, at the, towards the end. Um, Klopp will be very disappointed they didn't win that game, but... Hey, uh, I think we can go to Old Trafford and, and, and beat them. I, I, I don't think Man United are all that. I don't think they've been all that all season. If we can keep, get, keep, get, get, get in front and keep our foot on the throat, then definitely. Mm -hmm. um, but if you let them get ahead, they're a different side then. Um, unless you can stay with them until the end, kind of, and then they start bottling it a little bit. But you, you've got to stop Bruno Fernandes. That goal of Bruno Fernandes today, I don't like him, but it was a great finish. Mm -hmm. um, but a real bad mistake from Kwanzaa, wasn't it? Crosby might too. Oh, well, yeah, uh, I, I don't think you'll uh, look back on that too fondly. Uh, John Adams uh, over in New Zealand, thank you for your super chat. Great for Bruno to get a goal and a win in his 100th game. 6 a.m. is my TTR time for the next six months or so since daylight saving changes. Well, that's not too bad, is it? Uh, six in the morning in New Zealand, it can't be too bad. Um, Tom says rating most of them is going to be odd because there were some stinking first half performances and great second half. Uh, indeed there was, but that's what we want to see, Billy. You know, we've said it many times already in this show. That they've got to have the fight. And I think they they themselves, not just Eddie Howe, the players themselves realise that things weren't going right. You could tell without all the stuff going on, um, you know, that the players were, you know, they were firing each other up, but they were bollocking each other at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got to have that. You've got, you know, if a player isn't performing, sometimes they want an arm round them. Come on, you can do this and this, that and the other. Sometimes I need some raw aggression against them. Come on, get stuck mm. in. You can do this. 
You know, yeah. that ain't that isn't acceptable. And we saw it a few times yesterday from people shouting at people. Um, but the manager was just rightly angry with what he saw the first 25 minutes. And he did. It was a, definitely a strategic injury to Dubravka uh, while he was down getting in, getting treatment for an imaginary injury. That the players were getting a real bollocking. As <laughs> simple as that. And quite yeah. rightly so. Quite rightly so. Yeah. Um, the, the thing is, I mean, when we look at um, people are saying about, you know, um, Anderson and deserving to start and the fact that he's, he's looking after his players. But if this was the start of the season and, you know, players are playing games, then, you know, they've got to get match fit. And to get match fit, you've got to play them. You know, it's 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 always going to be like that. Uh, but I, I can understand both sides, to be honest. I really can. I mean, we'll come on to long stuff shortly. Uh, North Shields Jeff says, second best highlight of the day on commentary. Uh, Bob Marley gets one in the face. Crack the room up, Paul. Uh, well, you know, what changes? Uh, Hugh Guy says, uh, Anderson's probably more match fit than Hall. Uh, who has been cramping up towards the end of the last two games. Yeah, but Hall's been sitting on his ass for months as well, you know, so I can understand why he's getting cramp. He I don't think that... Long, he lasted a bit longer yesterday, didn't he? Yeah, he almost made it to the end of the match. But listen, he had to do a lot of running yesterday, Lewis Hall. Um, you know, especially uh, Awobi and then, of course, uh, Triore coming on, which, I mean, that's the last player you want to see coming running at you uh, when you've you've been running all over defending for most of the first oh, half. I mean, really? Jesus. But luckily for us, Adam Adam Traore was his usual self, wasn't he? Fantastic, and but no end product. Yeah, no product at all. Um, if the players get him to Europe, they deserve all the credit. Well, I mean, look, you can't say. I mean, look, Eddie does. You can't throw everything at Eddie and say, "Oh, he's done nothing right this season," because he has done things right. Um, I hope he's learned a lot from this season, actually, given how difficult it's been. So, uh, time will tell on that. Uh, Bruno is amazing. Hall, I am still deciding, and Barnes now needs to start. Uh, look, Lewis Hall, Billy, he had a dodgy first, I'd say 15 minutes of the first half, where it just looked like he wasn't uh, switched on. But then he grew into the game, and I thought after that, um, he was fine. I don't see a problem with Lewis Hall. Yeah, he got no help from the midfield. Or really yeah, we have to look at, there was no cover from Murphy, Billy. Will, no, it was Willock, wasn't it? Willock was just, I mean, oh, was sorry, Willock, yes, Willock. Yeah, Willock. Willock uh, Mark, uh, Lewis Hall went out to, to, to kind of mark the man mm. and the, the, the fullback went on the overlap and Lewis, and, and Lewis Hall was stood marking the man he was supposed to. But Joe Willett went and plonked himself next to him and let the bloke run. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. And until kind of Willett went off and Anderson came on, he had no help. Um, and when Anderson did come on, you, you noticed he won't be went out of the game, didn't he? Simple as that. He, he, he wasn't very effective at all after that. And that was Lewis Hall being really good for us, defensively and in the attack. It mm. just gives us so much more on, on that left flank from defence, especially with Anderson and, and Gordon or Barnes in front of him. It's a triangle of real talent, you know, but they've all got really yeah. great feet. And Lewis Hall's got a fantastic left foot, so is Anderson, and, all, and uh, whoever's on the, on the wing's got a fantastic right foot. You know, it's, 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 it's a threat for any team to defend, it really is. Mm. Uh, PL Rich says, uh, maybe you expect too much. They can't be brilliant all the time. I don't think last season has helped with uh, expectations. I think... If we're openly honest, Billy, um, maybe that's the case. Maybe that we, I think we found out this season that some of the players aren't going to stand up to the plate, aren't where, you know, despite the fight and the passion that they have, they're not going to be the future of Newcastle United if we want to be an elite football club. That's quite clear. Um, so I think we have added a realisation this season just about who is good enough to move forward and who isn't. Yeah, and the injuries haven't helped. I mean, yeah. had, we've had a third less of those injuries, I think we'd be high up the table. I mean, it's, it's yeah. obvious we would be. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely last season's high position definitely has proved the millstone round that Eddie, Eddie Howe and the team's neck, to be fair. Mm -hmm. um, people probably were expecting a little bit too much this season, um, even though he's strengthened the squad. Yeah, it's a, it's been a tough season injury-wise. Last season, everything fell right for us. The World Cup gives a break midway through the, through the season. So yeah. we can play that intensity game all the way through the season, really. Mm. Um, and this season won't be able to because there's been a very little break. We've had three games a season for a vast majority yeah. of it, or a, an awful lot of it, maybe not the majority of it. And mm. with the injuries we've been having, we haven't been able to rotate. So, whereas last year was was perfect, it's been the complete opposite this season. Yeah, I agree. Um, Blunt Rap says, uh, "Do you think the goal should have been disallowed?" Yes, um, I didn't at first. I must admit, and that you know, I've, uh, 
I've, I've listened to the commentary back and uh, I was adamant it should have stood. Um, but when you see the, you see it slowed down and you see it from a certain angle, I think you said it on commentary, Billy, there was one particular angle uh, that clearly showed that, you know, you, you're always, you're always going to get those disallowed. They're never going to stand now with VAR. Um, it was a, you know, I mean, it, he didn't need to do it either, which is the worst. He bit. didn't, know, but it, it's difficult when you get to a certain height. I think, Billy, when you're jumping and you're coming yeah. back down, your arms can well, sort of. I understand why it was disallowed. I'm not going to complain about it. It was, it was just one of those things that does get disallowed, with the, especially with the injuries that Burn has suffered from falling from the height. You know, maybe, maybe yeah. his arm out to, to go and steady himself, mm -hmm. and of course, pushed into um, Shirley Bassey there on the far post. But if he hadn't jumped even for it, it was over Bassey's head, and mm -hmm. with the goal would have stood anyway, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I'd, look, I don't think we've got to. We can look back and say, "Oh, that should." I'd be very sort of surprised if it was given. Especially, I've looked back today and, and watched it a couple of times and say, "There." Yeah, I mean, we 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 just nah. Um, can we please appoint Rafa Benitez over how? No, no, absolutely not. Uh, you know, Rafa's day has been in God, um, and I. Listen, although Rafa did a fantastic job for us, the football we played under Rafa was not entertaining in the slightest. And I, I, I think everyone can agree with that. Uh, Rafa is very, very defensively minded. Um, and I just think, you know, t we've moved on from Rafa. Um, and I, I, I wouldn't want how to be replaced with Rafa Benitez. That's just ludicrous. On the subject uh, of dinosaur managers and uh -huh. Rafa Benitez is kind of in that. Was I hearing things today on the Liverpool Man United game? I know Sam Allardyce was in the was in the director's box with with um, Ratcliffe and and uh, the other fellow. Um, mm. I don't know what his name is. They were, they were chatting, and I'm sure the commentator said that he's going to be the set piece coach at Old Trafford. I'm sure they. I'm sure that's what he said. Sam Allardyce. But he I'm said what? Sorry, sorry. What did he say? Sam Allardyce is going to be the set piece coach at Old Trafford. Oh dear, oh my good God! But then I've, I've seen on Twitter that he might be taking over from Ten Hag to the end of the season if they sack Ten Hag. <laughs> wow, wow, uh, wow! Well, Tom I mean, said come yes. on. Tom said yes. He is. He's going to be the set piece coach. <laughs> my God, what is the world coming to? Manchester Can you imagine United. that Allardyce is set piece coach? coach and manager Gareth Southgate Christ almighty wow hump it lump it in it yeah um a lot of people in the chat Billy saying about Bruno's injury uh sorry Bruno's celebration where he, uh, if, uh, the goal uh, his knee kind of dug into the ground and I you know I've looked at it again and thought wow you know he, he kind of looked he hasn't come away with that with an injury yeah I mean I remember an injury to Simon Jones the ex-England fast bowler in Australia where he's died for ball and his knee, knee got stuck in the turf. Yeah. And, and it tore his ligaments. He was out for two years. And it, and, and Bruno, Bruno yesterday, when he celebrated, he did exactly the same fall. The knee stuck in the ground. I thought, oh, dear me, what I saw this. I knew it hadn't because obviously we'd seen the end of the game, but easily, yeah. easily could have really done some damage there. Right. Uh, we're going to put the poll up for man of the match for the viewers, Billy. So um, it's between, well, me and you will have two players each to put up. So who do you want up first? Uh, Anthony Gordon. Okay. Gordon. Uh, I'm going to put Bruno. Uh, who's your second one, Billy? Emil Kraft. Wow. Okay. Kraft. And I am going to put Fabian Scher because I thought, apart from that one mistake, he was absolutely superb. Uh, so there you go. Uh, vote for your man in the match, guys. It is now in the chat. Uh, you've got Anthony Gordon, Bruno, Emil Kraft, or Fabian Scher. Who was your man of the match? Get voting, and we'll uh, tell you at the end of the show who has won the viewers' man of the match. Um, Andy H says, perhaps Eddie Howe will be the new England coach uh, after the Euros. Chance of it. There is a chance of it, uh, because we know that Southgate probably won't be there, um, which means that they do obviously need a manager, and Eddie Howe has been uh, put forward many, many times. Um, so we'll have to see on that one. Uh, Jason says, I've seen a lot of how uh, out nonsense in this chat, especially against West Ham before the comeback. Uh, well, not for me. Uh, I have supported Eddie Howe all the way through. I have always said he's still my man. Um, I'm not going to want Eddie out. I do believe, um, you know, there is some worry, I think, with a lot of fans that maybe if he doesn't get Europe, 
that we will change, like Billy uh, Billy said earlier on in the show. Uh, but that is, it's all about you know opinions from us fans. Only the uh, the chairman and the 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 hierarchy at Newcastle will know what their plans are for for the season and what will keep Eddie Howe's job. We don't. We can only um, speculate as fans, and that's that's what fans do. We always speculate and we always have opinions. So we just. Wait and see. Uh, Paul McGee, uh, hi, great show. Watching you take my mind off things. I was lost my mum last night. Uh, she didn't go to Newcastle much. It's when she was ill in hospital. She always asked how the tune got on. Uh, Paul, uh, thoughts and prayers out to you and your family, mate. He's so sorry to hear that news. Uh, and uh, I'm pleased we can take your mind off things. And um, keep watching, matey. Um, and uh, keep your head up. Um, it's awful, that. But, you know... Unfortunately, as much as it's a cliche, but life does go on. And I'm sure whatever you do in the future, Paul, your mum will be extremely proud. So um, it's it's an awful thing to happen. Uh, so as I say, thoughts and prayers from everyone at the Tune Review out to yourself and your family, my friend. Uh, Matthew says, Conference League would mean now to our owners, uh, in my opinion. I think they accept the idea of not having European football next season a while ago. I think any European place, the season we've had, any European spot will be a, 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 an absolute fantastic achievement. And like we said, Billy, that will help attract better players because it, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you look across Europe, it doesn't matter what Euro European uh, competition you're in. To those players, it's any, every European co competition is massive in Europe. Yeah, it's not just that, it's keeping the ones we have already. You know, you, I think European football is a, a must for the likes if you want to keep Bruno and Absolutely, He's people like that. And Absolutely, it has, it has to be. Um, but yeah, they attracted new players, which hopefully with this new luxury tax, hopefully coming in, um, mm. will in, 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 you know, allow us to buy some great players. And if we've got European football, the better ones will come definitely. Yeah, indeed. Um, Mark says Eddie got the cherries to the Premier League and kept them in the league for five years. Only a failure of technology got him relegated. I think he is a top class manager. Let's not forget that. You know, a lot of people say, oh, Eddie Howe got Bournemouth relegated. But if we're being openly honest, they should not have gone down. It should have been Aston Villa. The goal line technology failed that year uh, in an Aston Villa game. And they should have lost that game, which would have sent them down. So Bournemouth went down, but shouldn't have. They should have actually survived. And he had an awful season of injuries in that season as well. But he shouldn't have been relegated. And I think people quickly forget that, Billy. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Sheffield United scored at Villa Park. And they haven't turned on the goal on technology, which is, to me, it's bizarre. Um, mm. Whether it was turned on or just not looked at, I don't know. Mm. Um, because obviously Aston Villa, <laughs> you know, if they'd have gone down that year, they were in big trouble. Yeah. Uh, with, the, with the FFP and, you know, the the, 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 the amount of weight so paints their, their club and squad. Yeah, they'd have been in big, big, big trouble. Uh, Lewis just asking there what we thought of Wolves' disallowed goal yesterday. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, so I don't, I don't know. I thought it was. I thought he was in, interfering with the goalkeeper. If I'm perfectly honest. Yeah, he was standing yeah. right in front of him. Fair enough. Uh, Dan Robinson, thank you for another super chat. He says the big test for how will be next season. Need to see what he can do with a fit squad and the window. Uh, it's hard to win a race with one leg. Uh, exactly, and that's that's what I want to see. Um, Kual can't get a kick at the moment. I I don't think he's working out as well as I think. Uh, Newcastle thought he might certainly compared to Minte. I mean, Minte's just just looked superb. Um, but Kual hasn't played a lot of football at all. Uh, where he's out on, I think he's only played about five games, so I, I don't think he's uh, uh, he's he's very much thought of where he is. Uh, good evening, Paul Billy Bob, uh, and all you Geordie faithful. Please forgive my lateness. Uh, I'm sure we can. Um, uh, Retro says, just keep Kual in our under-21s. At least he will play. Good idea. Yeah, I mean, that, that could be a point, Billy. Get him playing English football. Get him playing with the with his, with his uh, with his peers, the same age as him. See what he can do and see if we can bring him through that way instead of just sending him out here, there and everywhere. And clearly, he's struggling. Well, that seems to be, to be the only solution because he's not, he's, he's not physical enough to play Championship or League, League One. Um. So yeah, give him a, give him a go in in the, in the youth squads and the under twenty squad and under twenty one squad, whatever. Um, and if he does progress, then you could put him on the bench. Otherwise, it's a career that's finished before it's even started, is it? Isn't it? Uh, it is. Uh, Andy says, "Hi, chaps. Why have you stopped putting the shows on to podcasts? If I miss a live, I used to like listening to them when out and about." Uh, Andy, it, it's 
I mean, it's the amount of work we've got behind the scenes, mate. If I'm openly honest, it's it's very difficult sometimes. Um, you know, when we, you know, we've got sort of Patreon now for the podcasts and, um, you know, we don't exactly get a huge audience on, on Spotify or um, iTunes or anything like that. That You know, we get a couple of hundred maybe listening. Um, the, the, and, and if I'm brunt, if I'm being bruntly honest with you, there's no revenue for the tune review uh, in that side of things. You know, the revenue for us, and as you know, this is our business. Uh, we have to look at where the revenue comes from. And obviously, you know, it, it's coming from YouTube. It's coming from Patreon. It's coming from the memberships. Um, and that's where we have to take care of things. You know, our members um, are the mainstay of this channel. Our subscribers are the mainstay of the channel. And we, you know, with this being a business, uh, we have to find the right balance between sort of what we do and revenue. And unfortunately, you know, sometimes the, the workload is is just too much for everything. And uh, I'm really, really sorry about that. Uh, I really am. But at the same time, um, you know, Patreon is there. Um, we've got some great stuff over on Patreon with uh, uh, Billy and Alex mostly uh, take care of that side of things. Um, it is £5 a month for Patreon, but in my opinion, it's worth it. You can uh, listen to uh, some great podcasts on there, away from the camera. No, it's not the shows we do on uh, YouTube, uh, but that, that's the way it is. I, I'm, I'm sorry about that, Andy. I really am. It's just that there isn't any. Um, there's just nothing in it for us uh, as as, the, as as a as a as a business. You know, there's just nothing there. And as harsh as that sounds, you know, in this day and age, you have to think about that. It's 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 where the the revenue streams are. And to be honest. Um, you, you, you can go back and listen to the shows on YouTube, you know, and just have the YouTube playing in the background or through your headphones. It's just, it's exactly the same. So, you know, you can do that. The shows are all still there on YouTube. So we don't have to put them up as podcasts. If you want to still listen to them, you can stick your headphones in and have YouTube on in your headphones. It's just the same it. as, it's the same as listening to a podcast, you know? Um, so that's the reason. Uh, Foxy says the good and bad of maintained one week today. Brilliant last Thursday, really poor versus Kulo, Kuals Volendam. Uh, exciting pro, uh, prospect for us, though. Indeed, he is. Uh, looking forward to this final push for Europe, but I can't wait for the summer overhaul. I think a lot of people are excited to see what we're going to do in the summer, Billy, especially if this vote goes through. Yeah, if the vote goes through, <laughs> the world's a oyster. Um, but we still got to get rid of a few players, no doubt about that. Um, some players are at the end of the contract, there are still some. Uh, in the squad that have a year or two to go uh, of the contracts, the likes of Lewis, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, if we could get rid of those and get fees for them, all the better. Um, and there's also one or two players in the squad we could do with probably shipping out the door also. Almon yeah. and Murphy for two. Yeah, uh, indeed. Uh, Jason says, do we need Europe next season? In my opinion, we are still not ready. Well, uh, yes, we do, Jason, because it, as I say, it, we've got to think about the likes of Bruno, Joe Linton, Isak. All these top stars who want to be at the pinnacle of football will want to be in Europe. So, you know, it's not just about who we bring in. Like Billy said earlier, it's who goes out. Um, and I think any European competition is very good for the club to be in. And look, if we're going to the Europa Conference or whatever it is next season, then the summer, they will learn of lessons from last season and make sure we got the squad this year. Uh, especially if uh, this new little, uh, the ta I can't keep it. What is the tax called, Billy? Luxury. Luxury, yes. It's a luxury tax. If that comes in, hunky-dory. Um, if you qualify for the, for the conference, you'd expect us to win it. I mean, it'd be, it'd be, a, it'd be terrible if we didn't win that. Because, I mean, I think Villa will win it this year. West Ham went last year. Mm. And they're both in playing kind of substandard sides for the first bit of it, at least. Mm. And the Champions League campaign this year will definitely help us out in in the Europa League, if you manage to get to that, you know, the experience of playing you know, your Champions League football, playing a level below that, I think will be favourites for that as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's it, it's a way to grow as well. It's a way to move forward in the competitions. Uh, Tom has been watching your old vlogs, Paul. Absolute classics, uh, especially during the Bruce era. How times have changed. Back Eddie all the way and remember where we were. Um, yeah, my blood pressure wouldn't like to talk about the Bruce days, that's certainly. Uh, Wagner says, I saw a Chelsea's fan montage of Enzo, and they were all like, wow, this is amazing. And I was just thinking, dude, this is a slightly bad game for Bruno. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, Br Bruno, Billy, he just, he excels every game now. He's, he's just there, he's, his heart's in it, his desire's in it. Uh, you see when he scored yesterday, what it meant for him. 
he's a world class player. Mm. I said it after, after about two games of seeing him, and that when he scored the back heel against Southampton and things like you know on his for, for his first goal, I actually said there and then I think he may well be the best Newcastle United midfield I've seen, and mm. there's no doubt about that now in my opinion. He may well be the best Newcastle United player I've seen. He's, a, yeah. he's an absolute phenomenal player. The, a lot of people, a, a lot of people have said that. By the way, that he is probably the best, one of the best we've seen in a very, very long time. Um, Chris says, "I agree one hundred percent with all that said, lads." And big up to Billy and Lady Sam for showing us some love uh, in the EM post match too. Uh, um, evermore, yeah, uh, great to see us uh, NUFC content creators supporting each other. Absolutely, Chris. Um, yeah, we, you know, Billy has to keep reminding me, Chris. I will uh, admit to that that uh, Billy keeps having to uh, um, keep just making sure that we throw ever more in uh, at the end of the, the the match day lives to obviously nip across to your channel and uh, uh, for the uh, post match um, review because uh, one thing about Evermore guys is is that they are very similar to us in that they speak from the heart, they speak passion, and they don't bullshit anyone. Uh, so if you're looking for another Newcastle United channel similar to this one uh, with some great presenters, great guys and a great channel, uh, Evermore, NU Evermore NUFC is the place to go. Um, they're very much friends of this channel uh, and um, to help them grow is, a, is, is very important to us because they're good friends of the channel, great guys. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to get them on actually with us a, a few times uh, over the next coming weeks and over the summer as well, talking about next season. So um, uh, you've got all that to look forward to. Uh, Gordon can't shoot right from the right, though, in my opinion. Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, he flashed a right foot shot, which was really on the right yesterday in the first half. He come right across and uh, just wide. But I think Gordon, I mean, obviously, Billy, we talk about Gordon and Barnes and the difference they made. They were clearly... Uh, probably the two that should have started yesterday because, uh, I mean, the, the rank both fullbacks knew they were in a game, especially Castagna. Yeah, Castagna didn't know whether it was New Year or New York. I mean, Gordon took him to the cleaners. I was a little bit worried if Harvey Barnes could do the same. He actually he actually did. Uh, and at the same time, um, Gordon was giving Robertson the run around as well. Which before mm. that, I mean, Robertson had a cigar in his mouth defending that, uh, Jacob Murphy, what I say. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, we put Gordon on the right. That's where we should have started, in my opinion, and Barnes on the left. And they caused havoc. We created all sorts, didn't we? I mean, we could have had four or five after they were on the pitch. Uh, Marius says, uh, I disagree with Paul. Everything looks much worse in slow motion. Uh, obviously, talking about the Dan Byrne uh, disallowed, obviously, Fabian Scherz disallowed goal. Hmm. Fair enough. If you think it wasn't a foul, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to argue with you, to be honest, because I think it's it's one of those that could have gone either way. I do think in the end it was a foul. I don't think they're going to get given anymore. Uh, I think a few years ago the Wood. I remember Shearer for Blackburn, Billy going in on Darren Peacock, very similar mm -hmm. uh, at Ewood Park and um, scoring, and the goal. It was it wasn't even in question. No, yeah, in that day and age, you could do anything you like, really, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. This, this day and age, just touching the player and it's disallowed. It really is. Yeah, um, it's the way it's, it's turned. Unfortunately, it's supposed to be a man's game, but it's not anymore. No, it's it's, it's very strange. Uh, Samsonite Dove, thank you for your super chat. He says, "I'm just amazed how Bruno has managed to not get booked so many games in a row because he knew the team needs him." Uh, yeah, his discipline's been absolutely fantastic. I'm 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 itching to see what he's like when this uh, yellow card thing disappears, Billy. <laughs> but, We've got one game to go, hasn't he? So yeah, yeah. But I think if listen, if he's doing it now and still performing like he is, then, you know, he, he, if he's got other midfielders around him, I mean, Longstaff's not the answer. Jesus Christ. I mean, Jesus Christ. He Man. did improve a little bit in the second half yesterday, but holy hell. I mean, I, it, it just, it, it's beyond a joke now. It really is. Uh, it, it really is a joke. Um, Baz Downer says, I flicked on the commentary when Cher scored uh, and I thought it was a goal. And they thought it was a goal. Uh, interesting. Uh, TV commentary thought it was a goal. Uh, look again. It's 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 personal opinions, isn't it? But um, rightly disallowed. But watching the antics of corner kicks makes a mockery of the decision. Well, I mean, yeah, we see I mean, it every game. You do, yeah. I mean, it was similar to the the, the Paul Dummett one, wasn't it? You see that. You saw it ten minutes later or, or five minutes later, didn't you? In the mm. Newcastle Everton game, when Tarkovsky wrestled someone to the ground, nothing given, nothing yeah. given. It was the same same foul, and yet VAR didn't choose to look at that one. Mm -hmm. Um. Look, people are saying Barnes should have been on the man of the match thing. Look, 
it's very difficult sometimes to 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 sort of get your your votes in for man of the match, but we go with four and we choose the four. Um, Barnes will definitely get a, a, a mention uh, because he did brilliantly when he came on and obviously set up the goal. So uh, he did really, really well. But there's no doubt about that. But man of the match for me, I think there's other ones uh, ahead of Harvey Barnes yesterday. Uh, but let's do the player ratings now, Billy. Um, obviously, we'll start off with Martin Dubravka. What do you think? I'll give him a solid, a solid seven. I thought he was yeah, he's very, very good yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a one or two shaky moments, but in the main, really, really good. Didn't have a lot to do with shot stopping wise, but he, he came and caught some catches yesterday from crosses, which I thought was really good. Yeah, yeah seven for yeah. me. Uh, guys, please put in the comments whether you agree with us or not. Put your uh, 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 what the hell am I going to say, Billy? I'm I tired. Know. I feel drunk. I'm so tired. Your player <laughs> ratings. Put them. In, put them in the chat, guys. <laughs> Jesus, it's Christ. I need me bed. Um, yes, and of course, please do subscribe if you're new to the channel. Nearly a thousand watching. Uh, if you like what you see. Bottom right hand corner, or if you're watching this on a rerun, just hit that subscribe button. Come and become a, a, a subscriber of this channel as we head towards 29,000. I'm going with a seven for Dubravka as well. I thought he made, I thought his saves, Billy, were comfortable yesterday. I don't think he had to really overstretch for anything. They were, they were at his height, pretty much straight at him. But like you said, he dealt with crosses very well yesterday. A um, couple of dodgy ones, yes, but. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Ian Barron says, uh, well done uh, for Gateshead FC getting through to the FA Trophy final at Wembley. Absolutely. Um, I was going to mention that at the end, but I'll do it now. Wonderful. And, and Gateshead are going great guns this season, Billy, with an opportunity to get back into the Football League as well. Yeah, Rob Elliott's done a fantastic job there, hasn't he? He has, yeah. After Mike Williamson left, there was a bit of a lull, but he's, he's brought it back. And, you know, they're looking like they're going to be in the playoffs for the to get into the league as well. So it's been a fantastic mm. season for the Heat. I don't know. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and we'll be keeping a very close eye on them. Um, they will be part of my, uh, uh, well, quite big video that I'm going to do profiling some of the Northeast teams, um, you know, about what's happened in Northeast football and where we all are. I can't get every team in, of course. Well, Gateshead is certainly going to be up there. They're having a brilliant season. I, think, I, I did initially say South Shields were a very exciting team coming through, but Gateshead. I mean, like Billy says, Rob Elliott's doing a fantastic job since coming in for Mike Williamson. So uh, they are on their way to Wembley again. And it, it is fantastic. Uh, Gary says, what surprises me is the ref disallowed the share goal, but the ref against Everton let everything go. Uh, they seem to make it up as they go. Well, we know that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ian says, don't forget Steve Watson, next tune player at Darlington. Yeah, Darlington, by the way, uh, in serious trouble near the bottom of the league um, of, uh, you know, Vanarama North, but they have got some cracking results since Steve Watson has come in. And although they're not clear of relegation yet, uh, there are a couple of points above the relegation zone. I think it's one or two. Um, Ian, I know, is a Darlington fan, so he won't put me right on that. But they have had some brilliant results out of the relegation zone. And again, another ex Newcastle United player who is doing a very good job uh, in management. Um, he's do- he did well at York, I think, Billy. He's had a couple of jobs. Um, Mike Williamson doing well at uh, McDonald's as well, although I don't like talking about McDonald's because I don't think they're a real football team, quite honestly. Um, but there you go. Um, <clears throat> did the new NUFC women win the league? No, they've got a home game against Huddersfield next Sunday. Uh, I'm going to be there. It's going to be a great day. The, the lasses are going to win the league on home soil. Uh, right, let's move to right back, Billy. Emil Kraft. So had a really, really good game. I mean, he was very shaky against Everton, I thought. But yesterday, I thought it was really solid. Mm-hmm. Helped with the attack, um, made a, a fantastic bit of defensive play to cover for the two centre halves who have both gone missing. Trying yeah. to tackle the Wobi on the on the left flank, uh, I'll give him an eight. Yeah, outstanding. Uh, I'm going to give him an eight as well, and and the reason I'm giving him an eight, and he's getting sevens and eights in the chat to be honest. But <clears> um, I thought he looked solid yesterday. He was let down a lot by Murphy early doors. Uh, there was three on ones and two on ones a lot on that side. Uh, but I think Kraft grew into the game. And if you look th- look at the game back and watch the times that he holds off defenders when they're trying to get the ball in the back of the net, he does a brilliant job. Absolutely brilliant. So I think Kraft really stepped up to the plate yesterday. Um, Martin Brophy, member for seven months, says, thoughts on the Fenerbahce players letting Galatasaray score, then walking off the pitch. I don't know anything about that, so I can't comment on it. Um, left back, Billy, Lewis Hall. I'll give him an eight as well. Yeah, I thought it was very, very good. Had a shaky start, as we've alluded to earlier. Um, but he came into the game, lasted a little bit longer this time, um, but defensively solid after his shaky start and very, very good joining the attack as well. So I'll give him an eight. 
Uh, indeed, I'm going for a seven. Um, I don't think he was as good as Kraft, but uh, right up there again. Slow start to the game. Looked a bit. He looked a bit nervous, I think, for some reason uh, yesterday. But uh, he grew into the game and uh, coped very well in the end. Um, I think you know anybody that's in a foot race with uh, with Triori is going to struggle. But I think he got his position. Triori burst past him a couple of times, but Lewis Hall got back and mm. you know blocked a couple of crosses as well. Uh, Ian says 10 wins out of 13. Uh, Darling, we're nine points clear from safety. We're only two now, but there's only two games to go. So come on, Darlow, indeed. Um, Darlington is my next FM24 save after Newcastle. I've picked them out to take them back to the glory days uh, when I used to stand at Feetham's cheering them on when Newcastle were away. Uh, okay, uh, let's move into centre-half now and uh, we'll go with Big Dan Byrne first, Billy. I'll give Dan Byrne a nine. Yeah, thought they had a really good game. Excellent defensively. Mm, yeah, really, really good. One one dodgy moment where we came out to cover the left back and Fabian Share joined it, but that wasn't really his fault. That was more Fabian Share's fault. Mm. Uh, so I'll give I'll give Dan Byrne a nine. Again, left in the front as a captain. That's what you want from a captain. Yeah. Uh, I'm going with an eight. Uh, and I'll be real why I'm going with an eight shortly. But uh, let's move on to... Uh, uh, Fabian Cher. I thought Cher was a nine yesterday. Um, I know he, he made a mistake, uh, a horrific mistake in the first half, which, I mean, if, let's be honest, if there was a proper striker on the pitch for Fulham, he would have buried that opportunity when it came to Munoz eventually, and he sort of powder, powder puffed, side-footed it straight to Dubravka. Um, I obviously think that, you know, Share steps up to the plate when he's really, really needed. And he's had a dodgy couple of games previous, Billy, but the last couple he's been seemingly getting back to himself again. And I thought the what you have to watch with Fabian Share, Billy, is, is certainly when Fulham threw everything at us in that second half, he was clearing balls. He was shouting at the rest of the players, G'ing them up, uh, patting players on the back. He was leading by example, getting headers in. And that's the Fabian Share that you want. And he also hit some wonderful passes yesterday. Mm. Uh, that's back to the Fabian share we all know and love. Yeah, I'll give him an eight because he did make a couple of mistakes. Um, the one mm -hmm. where he, he, he megged himself and the other one where he came in, you know, to the wrong side of the pitch where he shouldn't have been and left his yeah. man alone <laughs> in the box where Kraft covered for him. Yeah. But after that, he was superb. Yeah, he was fantastic mm. after that. Eight, eight. Okay. Uh, right, we'll move on to Bruno now, Billy. <laughs> um, I'll give Bruno a 10. Um, he's, he's, he's won us the game and mm. when he was had people next to him that was contributing defensively and offensively with Anderson. And to give him credit, later in the game, long stuff as well. Um, yeah. He looked an absolute fantastic run the game. He really did. Uh, yeah. I'll give him a 10. And, and the goal of the finish was fantastic. And his celebration was great as well, apart from the danger to his knee. Uh, indeed. Uh, Anjmag uh, says the chair is very easy on the eye as well. Uh, well, obviously, I am not going to comment on that. Um yeah, I'm giving Bruno a 10 as well. I thought it, just the way he picks the lads up, he keeps going, his desire to succeed. I think it rubs off on a, on a few of the players, apart from maybe Longstaff. Um, but, you know, he's he, he's got to cope with playing with Longstaff as well. Let's not forget that. You know, Longstaff's been poor for quite a while now. But Bruno, is he's having to do it all himself lately. And Elliot Anderson came on yesterday. I thought it was very good when he came on. Till half time, he had a very quiet 15 minutes at the start of the second half, came back into it, and Bruno was then able to, you know, do what he does. Um, so I think if Bruno's got some real strong players around him, he's, he's just accepted, he's, he's, he's just quality. The man is quality, and the way he took his goal yesterday was brilliant. Um, heart in the mouth stuff for the celebration, but listen, he's fine. Uh, and that's what the main thing is. Um, but I, I just think, I mean, PL Rich is saying he's putting himself in the shop window. I, I don't agree with that. I think he's been brilliant since the day he walked through the doors at the club. Um, regardless of his, you know, contract situation, I, I think he's been marvellous, Billy. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, he's... he's when it, when, whenever we not give him more than or less than eight, he's played 100 games, I guarantee 95, 95 of them he's been over eight. Been outstanding for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, let's move on to Sean Longstaff, Billy. Uh, well, if it had marked him on his first half performance, it would have been a two. And for the first 10 minutes of the second half. But after that, he really did improve. He got involved. He he created stuff. Yeah. Um, and he was quite good defensively also. I'm going to give him a six, which is really good for him lately, I've got to say. Uh, well, I, I've gone for a five, but for, ver for, for very similar reasons to you, Billy. Um, I think he was awful 
first half, uh, awful at the beginning of the second, and we were thinking, bloody hell, man, come on, get this guy off. But he did come, to Sean's credit, he did pick him, he picked his game up. And he did offer us a bit going forward as well when we we started to have belief that we were going to score first. And Sean was at the, the forefront of quite a lot of it. Um, so I think, you know, we, we do have to tip the hat off to him for that as well. Uh, we have a new member, uh, Jason Carter. Thank you very much for signing up the Members Club, Jason. Uh, you're very welcome here. And thank you for your support on the channel. Um, uh, Jim says, listen, guys, we were, we were terrible yesterday. So they all really get a seven. Well, seven's very kind, considering you said they were all terrible. Um, look, there were some players played, some players didn't. But what, what I'm trying to say is the belief of the team. As a team, they have belief. They have the fight. And, you know, to see a team fighting for that badge that they're wearing, that's what impresses me the most. Um, right. Um, Joe Willock, Billy. I mean, when, I mean, are we what, Mark? How long was Willock on for? About 28 minutes. We need some more that. Minutes. Um, what he was on, he was poor. I'll, I'll give, I'll give him a three. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't great. think he can get any more than the three. I agree. Um, okay. Well, what we'll do is we'll do Elliot Anderson now because obviously he was on for the majority. So um, I'm going to give Anderson a seven. I thought he was brilliant when he came on. He offered us a lot more than what Willett did. He was very quiet after half time. I'm not sure of the reason for that, but after about 15 minutes, actually, when the change was made, wasn't it? it was when Murphy went off, mm. uh, and and we started, you know, really having control of the ball for something that we hadn't done previous uh, in the game. Uh, I thought Anderson really stepped up the play, Billy. So I'm going with a seven. I would have given him a seven usually, but for that backflip reverse pass that led to the goal. I'm oh, I forgot point. about that. An extra I'm point going. For uh, yeah, eight for me. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. That was sensational, by the way. I don't, you know, I think we're the only ones that saw that, you know, in, in, in commentating wise, because it was just a lovely little flick, that wasn't it? The fact he wasn't looking when he was looking, doing it either. It was a, it was yeah. a first pass, but a back heel. Yeah. Unbelievable. Absolutely yeah. unbelievable. I'll agree right. with that, Billy. Yep, 100%. Uh, right. Uh, Jacob Murphy. I'm not going to give him a mark. No, none. Zip. Not a sausage. <laughs> Yeah, Seriously, it's a, it was absolutely brilliant. It, it's, it, it's a zero for me. I'm not even giving him a one for putting his boots on, right? Because I don't think they're on the right feet. Um, so yeah, a, a zero. I, I, and I, I, and that kills me to say that because I love Jacob Murphy. I love, uh, I love what he does for this football club. You know, both on and off the field. Uh, he's a Newcastle fan. He loves playing football for Newcastle United. But it was just one of those days that didn't happen yesterday for Jacob. And like I said earlier on in the show, I think he has been brilliant for us. I really do. Yesterday, though, was a serious one-off. Um, but he will put that right. He will put that right. Uh, some of the crosses he's done recently in recent games have been sensational. So I just think it's a, it, it's a one-off for Jacob. And he'll be back. Uh, right across the other side, Billy, Anthony Gordon. No, he gets the second 10 of the day. I thought he absolutely fantastic. Ran yeah, both fullbacks yeah. ragged. Uh, just a constant threat to the Fulham defence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is it's it's constantly, it's consistently brilliant, isn't he? 10 out of 10 for yeah. me. Yeah, he is. Uh, it, listen, what can you say about Anthony Gordon? I think he's endeared himself to Newcastle fans now. Uh, there was a lot of fans a, a little bit shaky of the signing when he came in. You weren't, Billy. I remember that. You were a very big advocate for the signing. Um, a lot of people had the doubts, but that's long gone. I mean, this guy has proved, you know, and remember when he signed Billy, a lot of people said that this guy's coming in with a big, big, big time attitude and things like that. We've never seen that. All no, we've no. seen is desire and commitment. No incidents off the pitch. You know, he's, 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 he's aggressive as a footballer, but I wouldn't take that out of his game in a million years. But the way he's performing for us, and you've got to give Eddie Howe a lot of credit for this as well, Billy, because, you know, he, he 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 didn't play Anthony Gordon a lot when he came in last year because he wasn't he wasn't fit enough. And Anthony Gordon, to his credit as well, has gone away, worked his ass off in the summer, played a lot of football. But as he says, he's loving it. He's loving the training. He's loving playing. That's why he only took a couple of weeks off in the summer. He just loves Newcastle United, and we love him back. 100%. So a ten, absolute 100%. ten, no doubt about it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, where he's up there with Bruno, isn't he? I mean, when we do our Player of the Season awards, I mean, that's going to be a difficult decision to make right there. Um, Ab says, Billy got Gordon spot on. And, of course, Mason Mount, who was linked with the uh, with Newcastle United at the time from Chelsea. And, and you did say, Billy, uh, Gordon in a million years over Mason Mount. Um, right, uh, Isak, Billy. Now, 
Oh, God. I'm going to give you Saka five. Um, I thought there was a couple of occasions yesterday that he had real opportunities um, to, to take the ball on and, and, and score. But his touch was off yesterday, uh, which is strange because he's been bang on form. Um, but I, I don't think he was at it yesterday. Um, but listen, we know what we know what he's second do. We know what he's capable of. It was just one of those games where he just wasn't 100% at the races. Yeah, and he had two very, very good centre halves against him as well in Bassi and uh, Tossin. So absolutely, yeah, it wasn't at his best. I mean, he was fed in, and if he had just had a good first touch, he probably would have scored. Mm. But he just wasn't himself yesterday. So I think five is fair. I mean, the one, the, the one particular one, Billy was uh, was in the first half where mm. uh, Longstaff played that ball through to him exactly the same as Anfield last year. Yep. when Isak smashed it in the net, he just he just lost it, didn't he? He just he couldn't control it. So. Um, one of those days. One of those days. Uh, right, other subs to come on. Let me think. Um, obviously, Harvey Barnes, Billy. Yeah, I'll give him an eight. He was, yeah. he was, he was only on for 25 minutes or so, 20 minutes. Mm. But in them 25, 20 minutes, he, he just did what Gordon did to Castagna, carried on with it. Mm. And Castagna really should have, should have known better because he, he's obviously played with him for three or four years at Leicester, um, mm. but just had no answer to him. And he knew he was going to cut inside, but Harvey Barnes... <laughs> He didn't cut inside. He cut inside, then went back on the outside again on four or five yeah. occasions. Yeah. Stanya had no idea where he was going. Uh, yeah. He was just integral to our victory, so I'll give him an eight. Uh, yeah, let's not forget that um, Isak had that incident with his house being burgled. So I'm he's sure. had a lot on his plate over the last few days. So we need to take that into consideration as well for Isak. Um, but look, as I said, we know what he could do. I'm, I'm not particularly worried about Isak because I think Isak is only going to get better and better. Um, and certainly the more quality we bring in to set the goals up for him, it's he's, he's magical at times. Um, I'm going to give Barnes a nine, Billy. I, I thought he was a sensational when he came on uh, because you, you thought at the time that Barnes might have gone to the right-hand side, leave Gordon where he was because he was obviously tearing Castagna a new one. Barnes mm. came on and did exactly the same. Of course, he, yeah. he knew Castagna from his Leicester days. However, Castagna didn't have a clue which way Barnes was going either. And like you say, he went to the right a few times. He went to the left a couple of times. He got the goal, he assist for the goal. I just thought he was brilliant yesterday, Harvey Barnes. And um, yeah, it, it should have started for me, but it is what it is. Uh, but I, I really, really enjoyed watching Harvey Barnes when he came on. Um, I think that was it, apart from the two at the end, Billy, wasn't it? Yeah, Dummett and Richie. Dummett didn't yeah, give anyway, it. anything away, so I'll give him a, t a 10. A <laughs> 10? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's give Paul Dummett a 10. He didn't he, he, he didn't wrestle anyone to the ground, but uh, yeah, too late for them. But look, what I really did love about that, Billy, was that the, when, when the additional time, Fulham threw everything at us, didn't they? They really did, let's be honest. But we wanted that. I mean, the, the defending at the end of that game was, was nothing short of warrior status. It was brilliant to watch. Um, yeah. The tackles going in, uh, you know, Fabian Cher cleared one and then went to, his, went to the players to G them up like Bruno does with the fans. They all just wanted to keep that ball out the back of the net. And Fulham, to be fair, they didn't create a lot. They had a lot of sort of crosses into the box, but we just would not let them through. No, absolutely not. It was a typical fighting performance. And like you say, Cher, Burn, Bruno came to the fore, didn't they? Bruno was getting little... Nicks in the box, taking the balls away and yeah. breaking with it and getting free kicks, getting us up the pitch. So, yeah, the, the, the leaders came to the fore in that last, in injury time, let's say. Mm. Yeah, it was an outstanding fighting performance that the last half an hour, I've got to say. I mean, listen, it is what it is with Newcastle United, guys. We know that it's going to be, uh, you know, squeaky bum time, rabbit's nose time, whatever you want to call it with Newcastle. Um, it does not matter. Newcastle United, uh, their club... club uh, slogan should be we are a roller coaster uh, because every time we watch Newcastle play whether it's the highs or the lows you always know there's going to be either one with Newcastle United and some of the time it's both during the game and you know it's incredible stuff at times uh, but listen we supported Newcastle long enough to know how it goes now that's that's just the way it is as a Newcastle fan uh, finally Eddie Howe Billy well it's, I, I didn't like his team selection um mm. I thought Barnes and Anderson should have started. However, he did kind of read the right act, got us into some kind of mood to play the game. We were better mm. after the right act was read. Uh, and second half, after the initial kind of burst from Fulham, which we were always going to get away from home, teams do start halves you know, on the front foot trying to get the fans into the game. You yeah. know, I thought that, yeah, he, he made changes at the right time, really. Mm. 
and we won and won the game. So for that alone, I'm going to give him an eight. Okay, I'm going with a six, um, but I'll tell you why. Uh, I didn't agree with the starting lineup, like you said. Uh, I loved his riot act. Uh, it was nice to see, uh, although the players probably didn't want to see that, but they deserved rockets up their asses because they were way off the pace uh, in that, certainly the first half an hour. Um, but one in the second half where we saw uh, Barnes was ready to come on, but he didn't make the change for another 10 minutes. Barnes was stripped and ready to come on. Then he was told to put the bib back on and go and continue warming up. Now, he should have been on. The alarm clock hadn't gone off. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what you said. Yeah, I remember the alarm on his watch hadn't gone off for 65, 60, 65 minutes. I think he should have been on. He, he, he was obviously told to strip, to come on, to, to you know, and then he's, he's ready behind Tyndall and how to come on. And then suddenly he's thrown an orange bib to go and continue to warm up. We don't see him for another 10 minutes. Um, so, yeah. I'm giving, that, I'll, I'll, I'll give him extra points for actually getting the best on to drop to Bravka to get go down, knowing they couldn't take off the pitch. <laughs> So they could read this like that. So I think I, I honestly think that's a, a goalkeeper's union thing, you know, Billy. Uh, between Dubravka and Nick Pope, of course. I, I think they all come together and say, "Look, if we're not playing very well, let's give the lads a little break. Let's just because they know they don't have to come off for treatment. You know, the the, the thirty second rule doesn't apply to them, so they can pick up an injury, and then you know Eddie's able to read the right. I think that's something to do with what's already discussed. Uh, you know, if if, if we are under the uh, Alamo, like we were, just give us a little breather, you know, and enable Eddie to get his words across and, and reposition some players and stuff. So, um, yeah. Um, Ab says Barnes didn't come on because Shah might have been injured. Come on. He was holding his stomach at the time. I remember we, we thought he might well, Yeah, but him. Barnes has nothing to do with Shah. We've got other defenders on the bench, I mean, you know. I mean, Murphy really needs to come off the early, the better, really. But, yeah. You know, by the time he made it, you know, it worked. We won the game. So you've got to give credit for that. Well, yeah, but I mean, what I'm saying is, you know, Barnes and Share have nothing to do with the substitutions. You know, Barnes would have come on for Murphy anyway. Uh, it unfortunately, would have been dumb it probably for Share. Yeah. But that's nothing to do with whether Harvey Barnes is coming on that, or didn't come on. Uh, he could have, he would have brought a defender on. So the, the two mm. different positions. Uh, but anyway, uh, there you go. That is it for tonight. Uh, we will have a look at the Man of the Match award before we leave you. Uh, who do you think's won it, Billy? Be war Bruno, wouldn't it? Uh, it is indeed Bruno who was one man of the match yet again with 55% of the votes. Uh, second was Anthony Gordon with 29, uh, Cher with nine, and Kraft with seven. Uh, so Bruno clearly once again uh the viewers man of the match. Uh right, thank you very, very much uh for watching, guys. Uh almost a thousand watching on a Sunday night. You, you guys are uh, incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, if you have enjoyed tonight, please don't forget to give it the thumbs up before you leave. Uh, it really, really, really helps the channel, guys. I can't stress that enough, uh, how much it helps the channel to, to get there on the search results and for people like yourselves to find the channel. It's, it's massive for us as we continue to grow uh, with you guys. Uh, you guys are on that journey with us, so thank you. Uh, if you have enjoyed and you're not subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button be part of this wonderful community is free to do so uh obviously hit the notification bell as well so you never miss an upload or you never miss when a uh, live show is scheduled uh which is very important as well so thank you very much in advance for that thank you for all your super chats and new memberships tonight uh all your support is incredible uh thank you to the mods and of course thank you to billy thank you to you guys uh you've been legends again as per usual and uh, thank you for watching and we will see you very soon in the meantime have a lovely Sunday evening. Good night. How are the lads and lasses? Come back and check on some green.